Hello and welcome to the first in this full series of videos where you can learn how to use Helm with Kubernetes. There's 15 videos in this YouTube series and about four hours of tutorial, all for free right here on YouTube. You do need to watch the videos in order, so there's a playlist available if you get lost. I've really neglected YouTube recently, so many apologies to my subscribers for that, but I will be making sure I post a lot more content here on YouTube in the future. So if you're not a subscriber, then do consider subscribing. Just a quick plug before we start, this is a full and complete tutorial on Helm, but you'll also find these videos as just a small part of my full 30 hour course on Kubernetes, where we deploy a microservice architecture to the AWS cloud. And you can find that course at udemy.com. I've also got a follow on course covering Istio, which I've designed to be a no nonsense, no jargon quick start to Istio. If you're interested in those, there's links in the description below, but you're here for Helm, aren't you? So let's get started. I'm going to use Minikube for the videos, but you can use any Kubernetes cluster that you have access to. You will need to install Helm to your local machine, but that's about it. On this course, we'll be exploring how to use Helm to download Kubernetes packages, how to find Helm charts, how to customize existing Helm packages. We'll also look at the pitfalls of Helm, such as snowflake clusters and how you can avoid this. But as we get towards the later sections of the course, we'll start to understand the real power of Helm. And that's writing your own Helm packages for your own projects. This means that a massive weakness of Kubernetes can be worked around you'll end up with dynamic Kubernetes YAML that can be customized and tuned for different environments without having to duplicate your YAML. And that's the real power of Helm. So if you're ready for this four hour journey, let's get started and look at what is Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes, exactly as they say here on the website at helm.com. S -H. You might be familiar with package managers from elsewhere, such as Yum or APT or Chocolatey if you're on Windows or Brew if you're on Mac OS. A package manager enables you to install a wide range of software packages with a simple command. So, for example, uh, you've been given the job of installing Git onto your local machine. Well, instead of having to find the Git website and find the installation, download it, execute it, configure it, and so on, all of that is a lot of work. If you have a package manager, it will enable you to run a single command like yum, install Git. And from then on, everything is automatic. And the important aspect of a package manager is that somewhere there will be a repository containing a large number of pre-configured software packages. So all of that's background. If you know all of that, then Helm is easy to explain. It's a package manager, but for Kubernetes clusters. So let's run through an example of using Helm in practice. Imagine you are working on a Kubernetes cluster. Now, I'm using Minikube here, but this can be any Kubernetes cluster. If you're following along, it doesn't matter whether you're running on AWS or running locally on Minikube. So imagine that you have been given the job of installing, say, a relational database service into your cluster. And as a working example, I'm going to pick MySQL, of course, very commonly used. So ultimately, what I'm looking for is I want a number of pods, one or more pods, implementing MySQL. I've already started Minikube off camera, and I'll just verify that uh, with kubectl get po, and I'll do that for all namespaces. I just want to confirm here that I don't have anything running in this cluster apart from the small number of pods that implements the cube system. So where do I start? How am I going to install MySQL into this cluster? Well, 
if I didn't have a package manager, then I'd have to find a Docker image for MySQL. I'll guarantee you that we can very easily find one on Docker Hub. We know that MySQL is really common, so it will be there. There will be an official image. We can get it. We can get a Docker image for it. But as you know by now, we're going to need more than that for Kubernetes. We're going to need to write some YAML. We're going to need a pod definition. We're going to have to wrap it up into something like a deployment. But it might possibly need a stateful set or maybe even a daemon set. I don't immediately know what the best way of implementing MySQL in a Kubernetes cluster is. Of course, we're also going to need to write a service definition as well, which exposes all of the ports and so on. So quite a bit of configuration to do. And it's not too bad. And you have done that kind of thing many times on this course so far, but it is a bit of work. And the worst part is, you know, we're not going to know unless you're a MySQL expert exactly what the best configuration for MySQL is when running on a Kubernetes cluster. What kind of requests and limits are going to be correct for MySQL? What are the correct ports? And oh yeah, it, feel, it feels difficult. But as you can guess by now, Helm is going to offer a solution. And the end result of what's coming in this video is that we can, if we have Helm installed, we can run a simple command like Helm install MySQL. Well, it's not quite as simple as that, but it won't be far off. And then Helm will go away and effectively download a standard set of YAML. And that will work as a great starting point for any MySQL installation in Kubernetes. So we'll get the YAML for the pods, the deployments. If it is a deployment, it might be a stateful set. I don't know. We'll get the service and anything else that's needed. And it will have been designed by some experts. And it's also going to automatically apply that YAML to our cluster. Well, of course, if I run the command now, it is failing. And that's because we haven't yet installed Helm. You do not get it for free on a Kubernetes cluster. So the obvious first step is to get Helm installed. And this is a really trivial job. I won't bother videoing all of these steps. If you've come this far on the course, then you must have installed Minikube. So installing Helm is a real breeze. You'll find Helm on the helm.sh site. And if you follow the link, you'll find it somewhere here. It's currently labeled as Get Started. And there's details on how to get started here, which you don't have to read because I will be covering this on the course, but I'm looking for the section here on install Helm, which gives us a link here to the official releases page. And this actually takes me to their GitHub page. Very helpfully, they have a collection of pre-compiled binaries for all of the major platforms. If we just go a little further down, we can find it here on the installing and upgrading link. You can see that we have a list here for all of the common platforms. If you're on Mac OS, be careful. There are two at the time of recording, one for AMD, which would be the traditional Intel-based architecture on a Mac, whereas the ARM64, that's if you have a Mac which is using their new architecture, and that would be the M1 processor. Same distinction for Linux. And if you're on Windows, there's only one choice. You need to, as usual, download the correct binary and then put it somewhere on your path. I've just downloaded off camera. And to keep things simple, I've just dropped Helm into the same folder where I keep my kubectl executable. But it's entirely up to you where you put it. And now back on the command line, if we run Helm this time, we're getting the traditional help page with a list of all of the available commands in Helm. Through these videos, we're going to be learning the most frequently used. Just to start though, if I run the Helm version command, I'm recording this course with Helm version 3.6.1. Now, because we're only working on the basics in these videos, I hope that these videos will survive for a long time 
even if Helm goes into versions 4, 5, 6, or whatever. But I just want to make a quick mention that Helm 2 and earlier worked completely differently. Basically, Helm 3 is a complete re-architecting of how it works. So I just want to mention that just in case you're looking around the web and you find any documents or any information that mentions Helm 2, in particular, if it mentions something called Tiller, then basically you can ignore that information. Helm, Helm 2 is gone. You definitely don't want to be using it. In Helm 2, Helm would install a pod into your cluster called Tiller, which did all of the work, but it doesn't work like that anymore. And just to confirm, if I go back to the kubectl get po command, and I am showing all namespaces here, I hope you can see that although we've installed Helm, there's nothing special going on in our cluster. It really is a regular cluster. So we'll pick up the story in the next video and we'll see exactly how we can get MySQL installed onto this cluster.